Welcome back, COIQ listeners. On today's show, we're speaking with Dr. Tal Rapke, who is the, he was a medical doctor. He also was a chief innovation officer at Sanofi, and more currently, he is the founder of Scalamed. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Roxy. It's great to be here and talk. Awesome. So I thought maybe we'd just kind of kick off by you kind of telling us a little bit about your background and what you're doing these days. And that might give the uh, audience listeners um, an opportunity to kind of just know you a little bit more. Yeah, no, totally. Um, so yeah, so um, I am, I guess I've been on, on quite an interesting journey of trying to, you know, I sort of describe it as a bit of a, a bit of a, a, an approach to understand the true consumer journey when it comes to healthcare. I think, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've spent many years as a, as a physician, I've spent years on the, on the, on the digital side where I saw patients trying to search and understand their conditions. I spent years in pharmaceuticals where we were trying to innovate and understand how people actually take the medications and why, and how do we give people the same feeling of, of the, you know, great health outcomes, but also support them in their journey through, through um, ill health. And throughout that, I guess, entire experience in, in healthcare, um, I've been really focused on the fact that we have a healthcare system that was created or set up in an age where consumers or patients were, were, didn't have the knowledge, didn't have access to information. And where people, for the most part, we're kind of like the, what we call patients, right? You have to be patient. You've got to sit there and wait. <laughs> and, and, and I've been over the last sort of years been thinking really about how do we start creating a much more intuitive, empowering system that really ultimately helps people live healthier and more fulfilling lives. And so, yeah, I guess, you know, my, my, my background has been varied and, you know, I've been very lucky and had some really cool opportunities in entrepreneurship, in large healthcare businesses and digital health. But, but when it comes down to it, I think my, my real passion is to try and make a dent in healthcare and help people to live, to help people make, make healthcare a little bit easier. So, so what is it like for you riding this, this roller coaster of healthcare innovation? Yeah, look, it's a great question. I mean, I think I, I, I definitely, some days I, I, I find myself screaming, kind of, you know, muffled, like, oh, why is it so frustrating? I mean, other days I'm really inspired. And I think, you know, it's interesting, even, even I've seen, you know, I, I've seen changes even over the last sort of three to six months where previously when, when I used to speak about the consumer experience of healthcare or the fact that, you know, managing one's health is hard. People were always like, yeah, it's not really interested. But I think there's been a real shift um, Mm -hmm. as, you know, we see a few things coming to the fore. I think as we start seeing value-based healthcare, um, so moving away from volume and moving towards value um, in the US healthcare system, I think people are really starting now to realize that that we need to start bringing patients along the journey um, and we need to start thinking more about outcomes rather than just about inputs. Mm-hmm. I think um, innovations, innovation is, is, is definitely a buzzword in healthcare, but I actually think there is a true appetite to change. You know, we can't keep increasing the cost of healthcare. I think we're seeing, you know, large out of pocket deductible plans. So consumers and people who are living with healthcare are now realizing the actual cost of their healthcare and are now becoming um, more savvy as to, to what they're receiving and the value that they're getting out of healthcare. So I think there's been a real change. There's been a real appetite for innovation. But at the end of the day, I guess I've, I, like many others in, in healthcare, apply a very easy formula to innovation. And that formula, formula is the triple aim, or as some call it now, the quadruple aim of healthcare. And if your readers, I'm sure, or your listeners are probably very familiar with this, but I always feel like in innovation is if you're driving down the cost of healthcare, if you're improving the experience of healthcare, and if you're delivering outcomes in healthcare, you're on, you're, you're on the right trajectory. Mm-hmm. And the fourth one is if you can actually help doctors out and you can actually help the system out by reducing some of the friction and the workload and the administration burden, then really what you have is a, is a truly scalable um, innovation in healthcare. And so for me, I think innovation is kind of easy in that if you apply that, that filter to anything that we do in healthcare, um, I, I think we're, I think that's the filter that I always encourage innovators to, to apply to anything that they're thinking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I will definitely agree with you. I mean, we are closer today to 
adoption of innovation more so than we ever have been. Um, you know, I think the last few years, there's been a lot of talk about innovation. And, and so we're just seeing kind of an uptick and it seems like we're getting closer and closer to that time where more transformation and adoption is really going to take place. Um, so, I, you know, I'm interested from your perspective, there's a lot of physicians that have turned entrepreneur, um, you know, what are the advantages or disadvantages of, of that dynamic? Yeah, look, I mean, I, th I think at the end of the day, healthcare is complex, right? There are, it's a, it's one of the only, it's one of the, it, it, it's a profession that's, that's, that we're trained as kind of um, apprentices in healthcare. It's not a standard course that you go to university. It's really this idea that you know, you're spending time in hospital, you're engaging with patients, you're watching very, and you're observing. Um, so there is, a, there is a language, you know, we speak in Latin, a lot of our language. We, 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 we need to think, you know, there, there's, there's complexity around financials and other bits and pieces. So I think having that, being able to be on the front line and speak to a clinic or speak to a physician or speak to a, speak to a, a hospital group and even a payer and have some credibility as someone who's been through the system and seen what it's like to be a, to be, to be on the front line. I think, I think it's helpful. I don't, I wouldn't dissuade people who don't have that experience to not jump in, but I do think it's, it's important to understand um, how, how healthcare thinks. And I think having that physician training does, mm -hmm. is an advantage. That said, I also think that, that the healthcare system and, and my training, and I can only speak to my, my training in healthcare, you know, we're also trained quite algorithmically. So healthcare, you know, as, as, a, as an apprenticeship, as, as a training course, we're taught to think about problems in a very linear and, and, and method, a sort of method to the madness of, of, of medicine. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that sometimes can actually get in the way of true innovation because, you know, it, it's, it, you know, sometimes we need to think creatively and sometimes there are other, there, there are other approaches. And so I think, Trying to, you know, as a doctor who's being trained, you know, classically, I think trying to apply innovation can sometimes be hard for some people. That said, I think, I think it's, it's a great profession. Um, I, think, I think taking a medical degree and then applying it innovatively to solve some of the big intractable healthcare problems is a really satisfying and rewarding career. Um, and, and it means that rather than having an impact on a patient by patient basis, you can have a greater impact on a much larger mm -hmm. patient population. And that's, for me, is a real driver. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, as a, as a physician, you know, I imagine that you're just completely immersed in the healthcare system, right? And so you're identifying problems just in your day-to-day -day practice. And as you identify those, you know, um, it, it's, it seems like it, you know, it's, it's, common for um, a physician to decide that I've got an idea for a solution to solve that problem and then, you know, turn into an entrepreneur, decide to launch this innovation and, you know, help us help our audience understand what are maybe some of the misnomers of, okay, I'm a physician. I understand the problem. I've got a really good solution. I'm very familiar with this dynamic. So I, I feel like I'm really comfortable with problem solution fit. Um, or product market fit, and now I'm going to go to market and I'm going to be successful, and then and then reality hits. Um, you know, so kind of just talk about that a little bit of of what's the reality of going to market and trying to commercialize an innovation, um, even if you have something that is superior to what's being done currently in the marketplace. Yeah, that that's that's a great question. So so I think um, healthcare is a very evidence driven profession, right? So um, there have been many promises of, of amazing technologies, amazing, you know, pharmaceuticals, amazing devices that have a great promise and that mm -hmm. sound really good. And then when you actually put them into clinical, proper clinical research, you know, double blinded, randomized, controlled, gold standard studies, we actually find they don't perform as well as they, as, as well as they, they, mm -hmm. as well as we thought they would. So there is something about healthcare that, you know, the, the stakes are high. If you screw up, you know, at the end of the day, you're impacting someone's life. And so, mm -hmm. so I guess as a, as a physician, it's a really, you know, it's part of our, it's part of the philosophy is we are an overly cautious group because like I said, there are high stakes. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that we've been focused on at Scalamed has been when it comes back to sort of problem solution is really trying to think about the entire flow of that system. 
how are we how are we impacting the workflow of the clinician what does the clinician need to change in order to apply this particular solution what are the risks that they're putting to a patient what are they what are we taking them away from that could potentially be be have a greater impact so if you're saying to a doctor listen you've got you know, certain number of hours in a day that you can perform activity and care activities. Firstly, you know, we need to make sure that you're getting um, paid appropriately for those activities. But secondly, should I be calling a patient or should I be working on this tool? Should I be typing something into a computer or should I be running this particular diagnostic test? And, and at every decision point, we need to make sure that people are focusing on the most impactful um, things to drive and deliver good healthcare. And so I think as we thought about our solution, we wanted to find a solution with Scalamed that would ultimately deliver great outcomes to patients, again, along the triple aim of healthcare, that wouldn't interfere with the workflow of the doctor, would actually um, make their, you know, improve the efficiency of their workflow and, that, and create a lot of automation behind, behind the doors to actually make sure that we can deliver the, and execute against our vision. And so I th I'd encourage people when they think about a, a great solution is, if that solution just helps one individual within the healthcare system, so just helps the doctor with their efficiency, you've always got to think about, is someone willing to pay for it? Mm -hmm. What does it do to patient health? What does it do to the experience of healthcare? Does it reduce, you know, um, administration burden? And I think we know when we've looked back at all of the litany of digital health failures or innovate innovations that, you know, on paper were amazing and amazing technology and brilliant ideas. A lot of them relied on changing workflow Mm -hmm. and, and the value that it brought to the system just wasn't there. And so, you know, we are creatures of habit, um, physicians. We, we, we know workflow is important. Um, you know, when, you've, when you're sitting in front of a patient, you've got an, an EMR system that's throwing up a thousand pieces of content and information at you. You've got a patient with, you know, printouts from Google and, and, and a litany of problems. You've got, you know, your phone buzzing and ringing. And, you know, you kind of got to break through that clutter to really have something that's truly impactful and solve, solves, solves those, those, those moments of care. And so I think, I guess, yeah, I, I don't know if, that I have a formula for, for how to take a problem and solve it, but I, but I do think there are a lot of things that we need to think about. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the more that we, th that, you know, innovators think about all the elements of a system, I think they're more likely to be successful in solving those problems. Absolutely. Um, so, so you kind of touched on this a little bit. What drove you to build Scalabed? Yeah, so, so I guess I, I, you know, being on the front line in hospital and seeing patients come into hospital for preventable health issues. So I took too much medicine or I missed my dose of medicine yesterday because the pharmacy was closed at, you know, 6 p.m. at night and I couldn't get my new pills or, you know, my prescription was stuck in a pharmacy that's, you know, I don't, yeah, it's no longer near me or, you know, I, I don't know, like I lost my prescription or, you know, I'd see patients coming to emergency department all the time um, with side effects from medicines that they should never have been prescribed in the first place or with interactions or medications that they were allergic to that just weren't, that the right questions weren't asked. And I saw that on the front line. I thought, oh my God, this is, this is awful. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and shamefully it was completely preventable. And then I'd see it, we know in the pharmaceutical industry, we, we had amazing products that, that have amazing impact on people's lives and people just didn't take them. You know, we saw 30% of patients not picking up their first prescription. We saw 50% of patients stop taking chronic medications for high blood pressure to prevent strokes, to prevent heart attacks. You know, they would stop taking those by six months and we would see this and, and financially, that was a huge impact. But just the ability to be able to help patients, we just, you know, it, it was there, but it was untapped. And so I think seeing things from those different perspectives and then so seeing how patients behaved online, searching for content and trying to understand the pills that they were prescribed by a doctor in a, in a very limited amount of time and just not understanding why it was so important to remain on therapy. Mm -hmm. I realized there's actually a better way to, to help support patients with medication management. And I think... You know, when, when, you know, and, and having suffered, have, having, you know, chronic disease myself and having family members who have, who have suffered with illnesses and seeing it also from the perspective of the patient, I've just always known there's a much better way. And so this has been a bit of a passion project coming from various parts of my, my, my professional career coming together to say we can do better when it comes to medication management. 
It's a th over $300 billion problem annually. It, it, it individually affects people's lives. It disrupts their, their, their ability to be parents and grandparents and, and lead, for, lead, lead fulfilling lives. And, and I think that's where we really came about. We, we can actually do a lot better when it comes to medication management. And so, yeah, I, um, you know, we spend a lot of time understanding the problem. We spend a lot of time trying to work out what is the system currently doing? And we went back to the drawing board and thought, actually, there is a much smarter way to think about prescriptions that is engaging, that is empowering, and that ultimately prevents hospitalizations and prevents the morbidity and mortality associated with, with, with medical mismanagement. So one of the things that I think is most fascinating when I hear you speak is you first and foremost are talking about the problems that you solve, the jobs that people are wanting to get done and what they were doing previously to get that job done and what they could possibly do with your solution. And I think that although it's really semantics, it's the complete game changer in the commercialization process because most people, most innovators, when they're asked to describe what drove them to create their innovation, they start talking about the features and functionality of the product. They really focus on what it is that they're bringing to market and they think about it from the product lens as opposed to the problem solution lens, the job that they are hired, you know, the job that people are hiring their product to do. And, and I just think that that makes a world of difference. Um, you know, I hope our listeners take note to that because that is fundamental to being able to achieve commercial success. Um, mm, so, yeah, I really agree. Yeah. So, so one of the things that I think is really interesting is I was doing a little bit of research about you. I noticed that you did a, you took a sabbatical for almost a year. Um, and, and I think that that's kind of interesting in the entrepreneurial journey. So how did that, how did the sabbatical influence where you are today? Yeah. I mean, look, it's, yeah. so I, I sort of, I, I, I like the analogy of the snow cone. Um, you know, the little sort of glass, you know, touristy things that you pick up when you go to New York or when you're traveling around the world and you sort of shake the snow cone. And so in my life, I quite like this idea of, you know, I'm on a track, you know, I was a physician for a bunch of years and sort of, you know, then I moved into, you know, digital health and I was in pharma and I did all those probably for a similar amount of time. Like, so like these, get this seven year each and every, every, every seven years or so, I just like to sort of stand back from my life and shake that proverbial snow cone mm -hmm. and see where it all falls. Because at the end of the day, you know, life's short and, and we've got to be waking up every morning and making sure that we, we're focusing on the things that are important to us. And so for me, it was a really awesome opportunity, firstly, to um, show and, and spend real quality time with my family. Mm -hmm. Being able to get up in the morning without the distraction of technology, um, you know, look at my kids in the eye and be able to just, you know, spend quality time with them and let them direct the day and, 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 and the play. I feel like we, you know, we live our lives in these sort of six minute increments of right running from one thing to the next thing. And so to me, it was an opportunity just to stand back and, and think what was important to me. And I think during that time as well, you know, in the spaces, it gave me an opportunity to start thinking about Scalamed as well. And I started really researching and understanding the problem and speaking to people. And so it was a sabbatical, but it was a really chance to clear my mind and hopefully see, see things a little bit differently than others do. And I think when, when, you know, when we're in the detail, it's very hard to sort of pull ourselves out and see a much bigger picture and see other opportunities. And so for me, the sabbatical was, it was rejuvenating. I came back with an incredible amount of energy um, and passion to, to make a difference. But it also allowed me, I think, to see things that I may not have been able to see without having taken that break. And, That's you know, awesome. I, think, I think the fear of taking time off, and, and I had this same fear, so I, I acknowledge it, was, oh my God, people are getting ahead or people <laughs> are moving ahead in life and I'm, you know, stagnating and I'm, I'm taking a step backwards. And, you know, I'd watch friends and people, you know, move up in their careers or take additional steps or, you know, buy their next holiday home or do things that, to me are not really important when it comes down to the things that are important in life. But, but it, there is this feeling that you're standing back and people are going to forget me and my, my LinkedIn's going to go dry. Right, right. Am I going to be relevant? Am I going to be relevant? And oh my God, are you, 
And firstly, the nice thing about healthcare is it just doesn't move that fast. But I think it also, <laughs> I think, you know, coming back with, with, with a rejuvenation to me is, is incredibly valuable. So yeah, I'm, I'm a big firm believer in, 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 you know, taking a break, you know, relooking at life importantly and, and doing so consciously. I think the more we're conscious of what we do and, and, and what we want to do in this world, I think we're able to have a greater impact. That's awesome. And, you know, I think that that point can't be communicated often enough. Um, and kudos to you for, you know, having um, the, the mindset to see the value in that and then having the courage to actually take it, <laughs> you know, um, invest in your family and invest in yourself. Um, so uh, you know, I, I talk about this a lot in some of my blog content around, you know, innovators encountering this trough of sorrow or the valley of death, you know, all these doom and gloom things, just the reality of entrepreneurship because it's so difficult and so many innovators I think think that they need to work 60 or 80 hours a week in order to be successful right and never take a day off and kind of wear that as a badge of honor and really proud and 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 quite honestly you know over the years as I've worked with health innovators those that do you know not necessarily a, a year sabbatical but those that do those types of things um, you know eating healthy going to the gym you know th this idea of um, you know self-care and taking time for themselves, um, really, th they're the ones that are more successful. <laughs> they're the ones that are having a lot more success than the ones that are kind of just grinding um, day and night. Yeah, look, I, mean, I, think, I, I always like that. I like this idea that, you know, if you want something, if you want something done, you give it to someone who's busy, right? So when, 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 when your life's full with family and, you know, many things going on as an entrepreneur, it is a full-time, you know, it's sort of, a, you know, it, it's a, two full-time jobs. But <laughs> right. You're right. Look, you know, we, we spend, I spend a lot of time also, you know, wasting time and spinning my wheels and, f and doing things that probably aren't the most important thing. And I think, yeah, just being able to stand back every day as an entrepreneur and like, mm -hmm. what's the most important thing I can, I can do today um, to, to have an impact I think is, is, is valuable. Look, there's no escaping it. It is, it is hard work. Uh, I think, it's also a roller coaster, right? So I sort of joke that, you know, some days I'm like, you know, screaming, you know, ecstasy of like, yeah, woohoo, yeah. And then the next minute it's like, Wah! and so, you know, it's, it's this roller coaster. And I think for me, at least it was part of, you know, taking that time off and doing a lot of yoga and meditation and, you know, getting mentally really clear, I think has enabled me to be a, mo a lot more equanimous with the, with the journey and, and, mm -hmm. you know, enjoy the peaks and the troughs, but, but just observe it a lot more and not get as, frustrated or as you know is broken about it because it, that that is really stressful and so sure. um i think yeah look it, it's a long game um i think someone gave me some really good advice when i started on um, this entrepreneurship journey because i think when initially i started i was like one of those 80 hour or more with a week people and you know kind of bug-eyed and <clears throat> so i was just like tell it, it, it's 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 a marathon it's not a sprint and i think mm -hmm. There are definitely moments where we sprint, but I think, sure. you know, kind of embracing that idea that, yeah, there's, this is, this is for the long term, and to get through this, you need to be healthy in spirit and mind and, um, and it's important to look after what's important because at the end of the day, right, you know, the people, I think Steve Jobs said it right when he was on his deathbed, he was like, you know, this is the most expensive, you know, hospital bed in the world and really the things that are most important are the people standing around me. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that said, um, it also feels really good if you can, get to the end of our days and look back and feel like you've, you've made a dent in healthcare. And that's something that I just, I'd love to be able to achieve just a little bit of a dent, just making it yeah. just a little bit easier for people. Um, making it just, just knowing that you've touched a few people's lives and made their experience of healthcare just that much better. That, that would be an achievement. That's wonderful. I'm, I, I know you will. I have every bit of confidence. <laughs> um, so a couple other questions that I have for you that I wanted to kind of talk about that I think our listeners would be interested in. So I've heard you make this comment of, you know, kind of launching Scalamed in three hours. Um, and, but then the idea of the, the amount, you know, what is it going to take to be successful was very, very different. So we kind of just speak to that a little bit. Uh, yeah, so, so um, maybe I can talk a little bit about what we're doing at Scalamed and then, and then to the, I guess, our pathway to, to, to how we're having an impact. And, yeah. and hopefully, hopefully that will give you, yeah, answer some of that. So, so you know, we're, one of the big changes that's happening in, in the American healthcare um, space and, and really globally is a movement, like I said, towards value. And in the past, you know, 
um, you know, we had a fee for service model, right? Where, you know, you could go to a doctor and, you know, if your blood pressure was managed well afterwards or wasn't managed well, you got the same fee. And so as we move to a system where, 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 our, where our payers, where our hospital groups and our clinics are ultimately taking on responsibility for our patients' health, they're being driven to ensure that patients um, stay out of hospital and remain healthy. And one of the large causes of, 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 of hospitalizations, one of the large, huge burdens in healthcare costs is, 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 is medication mismanagement. And some actually quote and say that, um, that if it was a disease, it would be the third biggest or third, third most, um, um, most expensive disease that we have after heart attacks and cancer heart disease and cancer. So medication mismanagement, medication issues and side effects is a huge, is a huge burden. Mm -hmm. And so um, now we've got clinics, you know, using their tools of the tray, like medications and giving them to patients and letting them go back into the community. But what we realized is that as patients, we're on our own 99.8% of the year, right? And we're taking our meds. We're often not exactly sure what we should be doing and how to take them correctly. We're often the average citizen is seeing three different doctors across three different healthcare systems. And, and our system today doesn't really support patients once they leave the clinic to the same extent. And so we thought, what if we create a system that clinics could, do, could use that actually helps them be doctors and helps them support their patients when they're not there? And so Scarlet has kind of evolved into this virtual care coordination for medications. We, we have a system today that that you know, we ask patients to be responsible for their medications, but we don't have a system that equips them to take on that responsibility effectively. And that's what Scalamed does. It's something that the clinics prescribe. It's a new way for patients to manage their prescriptions on their phone. You know, I, I kind of joke that you know, it's, healthcare is one of the only examples, or, or medication management is one of the only examples today with electronic prescribing, where you go to a clinic, the doctor says to you, um, Roxy, which is your pharmacy? And you're like, ah, it's the Walgreens across the road from me. And before you know that you're going to need a pill, before you know what the pharmacy opening hours are, before you know what the medication is that you're going to be prescribed, before you know what the cost of it's going to be, you've agreed that that's where you're going to go and buy your medicine. That to me is just the craziest thing in a generation of Amazon. <laughs> and so, and then not just that, the second you've sent your pill there, you, you sometimes don't even know the name of what it is that you're going to pick up. And so we say, well, why are we ignoring the most important person in the healthcare, in, in this healthcare journey? Let's mm-hmm. give those prescriptions like we used to do with paper to the patient. And rather than giving them pay, paper, which you know, we lose and, 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 and bad characters can, can change or can defraud in some way. What if we give you a true unique digital prescription that sits on your phone, that is smart, that tells you why you should be taking it, that educates you, that reminds you, that warns you, that gives you price comparison. And that essentially makes the management of your prescriptions completely seamless, like everything else we do in our technology world. And that's what ScalaMed does. And we do this with a really smart back end that makes sure that we understand your challenges. We understand your unique issues with medication management. And when you're struggling or when you need help, we, 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 we help link you back into care so that your clinic and your clinicians can mm-hmm. help support you with your medication needs. And so that sort of holistic system um, is, is what we've been doing, you know, I guess with, with Scalamed. And we're starting to see impacts in preventing hospitalizations, in making sure patients aren't prescribed medicines that they shouldn't be prescribed, and giving people visibility on what maybe some other options are that they could be taking instead of this one, if it's expensive or if value is an issue. So it's starting to really change the dialogue and trying to increase the empowerment that patients have in their own healthcare journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I, I completely lost track of, I completely lost track of the question that you asked because <laughs> I was so engrossed in my own telling of this story. But, I love but, it. I love okay. it though. I mean, it, there's, I'm, I'm really excited about what you all are doing. I think it's, it's very unique and different. There's a lot of tools and technologies that are out there to kind of, that are, um, trying to solve the medication adherence problem and medication management problem. But I think that the way you all do it is, is so unique and it's really putting that patient, um, 
at, at the center. And, and so it's really powerful. So the last question I have for you, and I know all of our listeners has absolutely heard your accent. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and so um, I, one of the things that I think is interesting about your story is that, you know, you're from Australia and you're launching your innovation in the U.S. market. So, you know, most of the innovators that I'm talking to and working with, you know, when we're talking about global strategies, we're talking about how are we going to penetrate markets out side of the US and and you've kind of take that and flipped it down and flipped it upside down and and you're like okay how are we going to go global and how are we going to penetrate the US market so talk about that a little bit what is it like um you know coming in and looking at the US as a global market and in trying to expand yeah look it's a great question so I, firstly i mean I, i've i've spent i've lived in this the US for for five or six years of my life. Um, it's a place I absolutely love. It's a place that's very dear to me. I think mm -hmm. it's a country that's built on, that's built on innovation. It's built on, it's built on, you know, um, belief in oneself and belief that we can all have an impact and, 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 and make a change in this world. And mm -hmm. for me, that idea of, you know, th th those ideas just resonate with me beautifully. And so I think, you know, it's, it's always a great place to do business, but it's a great place to be able to have an impact. And I feel like there's a real appetite for, for innovation here that may not, it doesn't always exist in every part of the world. Sure. Um, I, I guess, what, you know, um, the reason we're doing work in the US is because it really is a big problem here. And, 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 the, and the ability to have an impact is, is absolutely massive. So, so, you know, yeah, coming into the US market, um, like I said, it's a place that's very familiar to me. I know I, I speak with, you know, a little bit of a funny accent and there are definitely words that I use that I still, even when I go to a bar and I ask for a beer, people look at me and they're like, oh, a who? Like a beer. And they're like, oh, what? I'm like, a beer. Anyway, so, so there, there, are cultural, there are cultural differences, but, but at the end of the day, you know, the experience of being a consumer of healthcare, the experience of being a patient, the experience of being a doctor, um, are, are very similar globally. And and I think the system here is really open to the innovation that we're presenting here. And, and I think US is actually taking some really forward, um, some large forward steps towards value, which is what we really believe in. And so it, it's just, a, it's a natural extension of, of, of um, for us. And, and, you know, we're just excited to be, to be in this market. That's great. So, so the last question that I have for you um, is, there are fellow entrepreneurs that are listening, healthcare innovators in the trenches right now. What is, what is the advice that you have for them? Great question. Um, look, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm, I, you know, I can give, I'm sure that people have given better advice than this, but, but I think my, my, my advice is general is, you know, one of our, you know, we have, one of our really important values that we have at Scalamed is curiosity. And I think, um, you know, being really curious in healthcare, asking lots of questions, um, not going in with any assumptions, um, to your earlier point, solving a problem or trying to understand really being curious about what is the actual problem and, mm -hmm. and keep on asking that question of, but why, but why, but why? And I think when, when we keep doing that, I think, I think, Curiosity is just an invaluable tool for, for entrepreneurship. Um, and so for innovators, yeah, I ask lots of questions. I would say, you know, it, it's, you know the US is a, is a big market. Um, you're going to get 20 no's, you're going to get 50 no's, and you're just going to keep on iterating on, your, on, on the solution. And I think if you really truly are solving a problem, if you're aligning yourself to the triple and quadruple aims of healthcare, um, I would say, you know, keep persevering because... You know, again, like I said, if, you, if you're focused on the right things, then, then you will succeed. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your time today and for sharing your wisdom with our audience. I really appreciate it. So how can um, folks who are listening get a hold of you? Um, maybe if they have some questions about you, about your journey, about your uh, Scalamed solution, how would they get in contact with you? Perfect. Well, first, I'd encourage anybody who's managing prescriptions, or anyone who's ever had a prescription sent to a pharmacy that's closed or out of stock or the price is wrong or just wants to feel a little bit more in control of their meds to go and download the Scala Med app. That's S-C-A-L-A-M-E-D, the Scala Med app. Um, and in the next few months, you'll be able to ask any doctor in the States 
um, for your prescriptions to be sent to Scala Med and you'll be able to receive them directly to your phone. So that would be the, the, the best way you, could, um, you can get involved and experience it for yourself. But if you want to get in touch with me, LinkedIn's probably the best tool. Um, um, you can find me there. Um, please reach out. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to um, answer and support anyone on their journey as well. So that's probably the best tool. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and uh, have a great week. Awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share, Roxy. Bye-bye. Bye.